Welcome to this week's ASX edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the ASX 200. I'm also going to have a look at gold and uranium, so make sure you stick around for that. I'm going to cover the S&P 500 in a separate video, and I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. As always, general commentary doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So, ASX 200 up on the screen. And it's been a, a pretty quiet sort of week in the, uh, in the local market. Not really a lot going on. Very similar to the S&P 500. And I think that this is, look, this is possibly the pause now, the consolidation that I've been speaking about for the last, last couple of weeks. It looks like maybe it's starting to kick in. And that's just it's typical you get these pauses after a market has a, has a run up through the moving averages, runs above it, often get a pause, a consolidation, pullback. And that may be what we're seeing get underway now. It's, um, it's important to remember that like from this, this low four weeks ago, back in, back in March, the market has run, the ASX 200 has run 8%. So it's a big, it's a big rally. It's a big rally in a short space of time. Ideally, what we want to see now, if this pullback does continue to, to unfold, we want to see, we want to see the, the, the dip being supported. We want to see buying come in, buy the dip type of price action as the, the market potentially pulls back towards these, these moving averages. So as always, I've got the, the 50 and the 100-day moving averages, which are currently rising. So that's a, that's a positive. Uh, and we can also put on some... Fibonacci retracements to give an idea of what could happen if this pullback continues to unfold. And you see the upper 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 bound of the, the Fibonacci's coincides with the round where the, the moving averages are. This isn't a target level by any stretch, but just gives gives you an idea of the proportions, gives you the idea of the of what a what a proportional pullback to that previous rally, what it could look like. It could see the market come back towards 7,200 over over a couple of weeks, may not do that. Maybe a shallow type of pullback that, that just stops above the 50-day the moving average. Um, of course, something else entirely could develop. But let's watch the price action. At the moment, it's, it's, it's encouraging, but it does look like um, a pause could currently be, be, um, be getting, getting underway. But uh, look, any which way you, you look at it, this remains a range-bound market. It has been so for 18 months. And and as I've said before, range-bound markets are, are just a battlefield. They're, they're difficult. They're difficult for everyone. They're difficult for those who think the market's going to fall further because they have these snapback rallies. And they're difficult for people who, who want to, want to um, look forward to the new, new bullish phase because you also then get these big downdrafts. So trading ranges are notoriously difficult and they can take time to play out. This is a key thing to keep in mind. Corrections, consolidations, they don't just work in terms of price, they also work in terms of time. You've got to give them time proportional to the, to the, the time it took or the distance it travelled to in the, in the previous, previous upward phase. So I'll show you what I mean. What I want to do, I'm just going to jump over to a weekly chart for the ASX 200. And I'm just going to compare this with, uh, with a previous period in time. I want to look back here. I want to look back to 2009 to 2012. And what we had in that period, this rally off the low, off the GFC low, that was, um, that was a 62% rally. Market rally 62% in, in, a, in a, maybe about a 12-month period. It then went through a two, and a half, or two years and two months worth of consolidation. And it took, look, it's, it, this was like um, a, a zigzag. It was a zigzag correction rather than a, a trading range like we're, we're currently in. And uh, it was, I remember this time, it was a difficult period. Um, during, during 2010, we were looking for the market to potentially re-engage with the, the, the upward trend that began in 2009. There was another leg lower, it took more time to base, turned higher. As I say, these things take time, and that's an example of time. Now, have a look at the most, most recent um, rally off those COVID lows. It's a big rally. It was a 60, actually, it was a 77% rally over, over about 18 months. 
and now we're in the consolidation phase. So far, it's been 18 months of sideways. But just just looking back at um, at this previous previous uh, experience, it was you can see how we've got the zigzag correction. And this isn't a prediction by any stretch, and these things never play out the same way. They're always different. It's just to give you an idea of the type of thing that can happen and why trading ranges are difficult and why they take time to do what they do. Um, it could be a case of maybe something like that plays out over the, over the next, next six months. Not a prediction by any stretch, but it just shows. It shows how big moves lead to big consolidations. Big moves, big consolidations. You've got to just let them play out. You can't fight them. Wait for the signals. Wait for the breaks. And, 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 and you just got to ride them out. We don't know how this one's going to play out. We don't know when the eventual end's going to come. But we do know that consolidations typically lead to big moves and, and new upward trends. So it's a case of being patient and, and, and riding this through. Uh, small ordinaries. Let's have a quick look at that over the last last week. So just jumping over to the small ordinaries. Uh, look again, still range bound. It's been we've had a had a nice strong rebound off the the, the lower end of the range over the last last few weeks. We're starting to see a, a gentle consolidation now. Let's see how this plays out. It's um, I'm leaning towards this being this being a basing formation that's that's taken shape over the last over almost the yet last year now, probably about 10 months worth of worth of potential basing. But there's still a lot of work to do before this could could say that this market is breaking higher. There's there's plenty more resistance points. It's um it's it's a trading range. It's about being patient. It's about waiting for the right setups. I'm currently seeing some interesting setups appear through my daily scans. But again, be patient with them and wait for the right ones. You don't need to swing at everything. It's a case of letting the, the right stocks come to you and playing at those, not just saying, look, I want to be involved. I've got to, I've got to buy something. Keep your cash safe until you've got the right opportunities. This is, it really is as simple as that. And then protect your capital with risk management should those, those opportunities not play out as you, as you were expecting. That's what I'm doing. Um, now, if you're getting value from this, please hit that like button. Leave us your comment. Just, hey, thanks for the video. It tells YouTube you're watching and YouTube will show other people and that helps me heaps. So please do that. And hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and visit me at motiontrader.com.au and, and maybe take up that free trial and sort of see some of these setups which I've seen come through in the signals at the moment. There will be some interesting stuff that you might not have otherwise come across. Now, let's go and have a quick look at some of these commodities. Let's begin with gold. Interesting week in gold. We're now starting to see a bit of a pullback develop after this um, strong rally we had from the, uh, from the February lows. Uh, I'd been talking about the potential for pullback for, I think, three weeks now. I started talking about it back in, um, back in late March, and the market continued to push higher. Uh, the closer we got to this, this overhead resistance, this big double top resistance around 2000, just below. 2100, it really got to the point where the asymmetry in buying into gold really started to dissipate. It's, um, I don't like to buy a market right below a big overhead resistance. It's, it does open. Sometimes it'll go straight through, but more often than not, markets tend to pause before breaking through big levels. And uh, um, the situation in gold now, if I just put those, let's just put some moving averages on this chart. And it look, it'd be quite it'd be quite common at this point to see also put some Fibonacci's on. That also helps frame up the situation. It wouldn't be at all unusual to see this market travel sideways for, for several weeks, uh, maybe making its way back towards uh, the Fibonacci region, which also coincides with where the 50-day moving average is coming up. 100 day would be moving into the um into the Fibonacci region before too long. That would be a that, that would certainly be a, um, a, quite a, a viable and uh, possible scenario that we could, could see develop. Uh, the gold stocks I have in my portfolio, I'm holding. I like the longer term picture. I think it looks good. It's just a case of uh, when we can look at the potential for a, for a break higher. Um, just reminding you of this earlier period, 
you've been watching the videos, you would have seen me speak about this before. It's an example of um, where gold ran up towards big overhead resistance and then paused for six months, six months of consolidation before a break above. Unlikely things will play out exactly that same way again. Again, it just gives you an idea of the sort of things that can happen. The market works on its time frame, not ours. We might like gold. Doesn't mean gold's going to run now. It's um, we've had it. We've had a big run. Might possible we get quite a quite a consolidation before we get the next level of excitement break above two thousand and eighty. If of course that that happens. Um, Quickly, I just want to show you one other precious metal we don't talk about that often. It is uh, platinum. Now, I actually spoke about platinum back in, um, it was in early January. It was breaking up out of this, um, out of this triangle training pattern. Had a breakout, the breakout failed, started to pull back. And this, this sort of thing happens quite frequently. Breakouts don't always stick. That's what risk management's all about, about cutting those positions. Nothing interesting happened for, for, a few, for a few months, but now something interesting is happening again. And just to frame this up, just quickly jumping over to a weekly chart of, uh, of platinum, just seeing where this has come from. And you can see it has been in a big bearish phase for, for close to a decade, really. Um, had a long period of falling prices, long period of uh, moving sideways. Actually looks a bit like a rounding basing formation. Um, which has taken years to years to form out, and it's just one of those interesting things which 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 turned up, which I've, which I've been keeping a keeping an eye on, and jumping back to that, and, and you can see it does leave plenty of upside potential. If this does happen to be a basing basing type formation, it does open up a lot of upside potential in 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 platinum. Um, coming back to that that daily chart. We've got the, um, the moving averages are, are trending upwards. Prices above the moving averages. It's it's a harder one to play. Um, there's not really any pure platinum producers or, or stocks on the ASX. But do some research if you like the concept. Do some research globally. See what you can find. A lot of base in South Africa. They're hard to hard to play. Anglo Americans the largest producer, but they do all sorts of other things as well. But I think you'll find there's some there are some platinum type opportunities. You do, do a little bit of work. Now, just lastly and quickly, uranium, not a lot, whole lot to report about this week. The range continues. The thing I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of and, and I'm watching carefully is that price is currently below these moving averages. It continues to sit below the moving averages, which as you know, it's always, for me, it's a point of vulnerability when a market is below the moving averages. Uh, we can also draw in a, a trading range that we're, currently um, sitting in, like it's how you want to draw this upper bound, but we've got, we do have a fairly well-defined trading range. Now, is this going to be, is this a basing pattern or is it a continuation pattern? So a basing pattern would mean that we look for a situation where uranium does start to bounce off the bottom and then turn higher again and start heading back up towards the top of the range. However, uh, we'll, we never know. We never know how 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 a range is going to going to um, going to resolve. We could also get a break to the um, to the downside of this range and see uranium move towards the bottom of this range. So, as the the theme of this week's um, video has been, or particularly the S and P five hundred one, is that ranges are a battlefield. They're difficult. There's so much ebb and flow within the range and they just do you emotional and financial damage trying to play them. So my, my situation with uranium is I have a core position I continue to hold and I probably won't look to do any adding until and if we get a break above this upper end of the range. And uh, that could be a while away still. This range could persist for, for many more months. We just need to wait and see. So Let's, um, let's leave that there for this week. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully there's been something of interest there and I look forward to coming back and talking to you next week. Until then, bye for now.